Hey, this is Kurt the Arborist on Instagram, at Kurt the Arborist. Maybe you found me through there already, I don't know. But anyways, I did some tree work and I uh, thought I'd do a little voice over here of some pruning. I thought it'd be cool if people would have uh, showed me that. Or if I would have found videos like that in the beginning. I enjoy videos where people do voiceovers with other hobbies and things that I do. But Anyways, this lady called for a tree prune. She wanted to clean... Uh, some of the canopy away from uh, her house, that sort of thing. It's quite windy that day, obviously, as you can see. I'm just showing her here a three-point cut, so when a limb's big like that, you want to cut underneath first and then move away from the branch or away from the tree on the branch and cut in case it were to fall and peel, then it, will, uh, it won't peel back into the tree. It'll stop where you made that undercut. Now the weight's relieved and uh, you can continue on to make a proper cut um, where the branch collar ridge is. So on these Schubert choke cherries they're a little easier to see which is nice. Um, and it's kind of where the trunk wood or the main leader um, bunches up and swells around where the branches. You don't want to cut into that or into the actual tree or trunk wood itself but cut just the, uh, the branch. If you're not exactly sure where that is, as you can see I'm cutting down there too, leaving a little bit out. Um, just leave a little bit more room out away from the tree, you're, you're better off. As Arbor Culture Canada Training says, when in doubt, leave it out. So there it is, you see I'm looking at it, checking it, check them angle. Um, you always want to cut perpendicular to the tree, leaving the smallest amount of surface area as possible, which is less for the tree to seal up after it uh, goes to heal. So here looking again, looks like this is a dead branch. Uh, I'm just using this little technique here too just to display, see how it's brown underneath there? I just took away some of the top wood and uh, checked to confirm that it was dead. Now obviously there's no uh, green tissue in there or anything, it's a good sign that it's dead, it's dark brown, it's brittle, it cuts differently. There's some Christmas lights in the trees here too, which are annoying. So I noticed this tree when I came right away that the homeowner said uh, just kind of stub cut off a bunch of branches that were in their face, just at all face level where they could reach. So a lot of them were, you know, small, like under a centimeter in diameter, but they were just cut off at random places. So I was kind of explaining that to her when I went and did the quote and then uh, luckily she called me back after I gave her all the information of how to prune your tree. <laughs> Which some people I think don't, they just figure they can do it after they've got all the info and realize what they did wrong but um, yeah here I'm just climbing up cheating with the ladder. I mean I don't need to use a rope for everything right but cutting out some dead wood. Whenever you prune a tree you always want to get rid of the dead wood. You know there's some back and forth controversy I guess about that in certain trees and where they grow and how they are whether it's natural for a tree to have dead wood or not but in this case residential trees I mean I always remove dead wood when I'm pruning um, maybe some stuff that's pointing in towards the canopy going the opposite direction of other branches um, again here's some more dead wood <clears throat> using the uh, Corona quick saw thanks Corona Corona shout out he sent me that saw and just sent me some uh, replacement blades, which is nice of them. I'm really liking that saw. It's got a little um, nose on it that you can grab grab things with or pull dead wood and snap it off if it's really dead and a uh, little finer teeth kind of towards the end. Here I'm checking this branch again here. I think just to show you, it's probably a lot easier to see in person and I would just knew it was dead or, oh no, maybe that one was alive and I was showing you that. I think that one was alive, I didn't cut it. Unfortunately, it's a little bit farther away than, oh, I got a quick glimpse there of some green tissue, but um, I'm a newer arborist and maybe don't have a ton of experience with seeing dead versus live versus dying when, the, especially when all the leaves are gone, the branches kind of get brittle anyways, and they can sometimes look dead even though they're alive, but I mean, you look for buds and other things, and if I have to, before I go to make a cut, as you can see there, I'll just pull the bark back a little bit and double check and that one was alive so we left her 
Got my big Hakes boots on. Love those beauties. Chainsaw boots. Super stiff. Big steel toe. Level 2 chainsaw rated. Gore-Tex. They're freaking awesome. They're so good for climbing trees. Like getting up in the unions and stuff. Like doesn't hurt your foot. I think I put my toe on uh, a branch really close to the main stem. Here we are. So here's what I'm looking for is this black knot. I don't know if you're familiar with black knot. If you're from this area, you probably are. It's really common in uh, May Day trees. Next most common in these Schubert choke cherries. So it looks kind of like burnt marshmallows on a stick or poo on a stick or whatever you want to call it. This black, swollen, gross stuff. It's, uh, it's a fungal infection. And uh, especially in late fall, it uh, can transmit itself through spores through the air to other parts of the tree obviously and to other trees in the neighborhood so it's always important to take it out. Unfortunately this was one of the big leaders in the tree but I mean it needs to be cut out about 30 centimeters or so away from uh, the infection. In this case I went down to the next leading branch which I think was the best idea. There's actually two coming out from that junction so not necessarily topping it or anything, but I mean the fungus needs to go, so you want to use your best judgment on how to do that. And uh, make sure you get rid of it. Just cleaning up that cut there. It's nice and clean. And uh, it's a little bit out from the other branches there too, which should give it a chance to seal over as best it can. <clears throat> if the tree's healthy, it should be able to seal over, I think. You know, and I, I don't know if I already mentioned, I'm not an expert. I don't consider myself an expert by any means, but uh, I guess I'm starting to consider myself an actual arborist now, but I do a lot of media stuff, photos and whatever. Like I said, on Instagram is a big thing, and I just like sharing things that I learn, and hopefully a video like this, a bit of a narration walkthrough could help uh, maybe some homeowners or some landscapers or people who aren't really arborists per se, or maybe even some new arborists, to learn about some basic things. I know I go to some jobs and some people's trees are kind of hacked up. They said their landscapers did it for them and they're the same thing. They're just kind of cut off in random places like a stub. So this is a pole pruner here I got. Nice daisy chain. Looks real cool. It's the most important thing. Uh, yeah, I did this awesome, you know, get the branch stuck in the tree t trick here and now I'm yanking it out and block not broke it off. Great. So it's touching the rest of the tree. Probably not the best idea. I don't know. Maybe leave some comments on that kind of stuff. Like those little details. I mean, I work alone, so I don't, I think about those things, but I don't, uh, no, but I mean, if it's obviously if it's open like that and it's transmitting spores everywhere, it could potentially infect those branches that it touched, especially if they got fresh cuts in them, that sort of thing. But um, I wasn't thinking probably good enough when I removed that piece. I should have cut off just that small piece probably carefully and took it away and threw it in the truck as a good look at it there. Or in the debris pile here to be taken away, to be burned, destroy it. Um, nevertheless, always room for improvement for sure. Uh, you know, as like I said, leave comments if you if you know or you see anything I'm doing that could be improved. I, I appreciate constructive criticism. Um, I don't want to appreciate the negative comments, the, the haters and trolls out there, but whatever. No big deal. I've trolled people before. It's all right. It's something to do, right? Yeah, the reason got, the branch got stuck up there too is because there's Christmas lights in the tree and I tried to work around them, but eventually ended up pulling a bunch of them out. So now I got my hand pruner. It's also from Corona Tools. They sent me that. It was, I guess you call them sacketeer. It's not hand pruner, but you know, I don't know if I'm cool enough to use the word sacketeers yet, but why not? So here's the little stub cuts there. Bottom left, one I'm holding just randomly all over. So I'm gonna try and clean those up and take them back to a main leader. In this case, I went a lot farther back to uh, shorten the branch. 
because this area of the tree here is of some concern because it was going over into the walking area up to the front door and over into the roof. So you'll notice, I don't know if it's inexperienced or just me taking my time, whatever. I mean, I have time and I enjoy spending time outside, usually when it's not windy. But um, I maybe take less in the beginning than I would have in the end. So you might see me take a few cuts from one branch and then, you know, I take more and then I realize, you know, I could have just taken the whole limb and saved time. But I think that comes with experience and I would rather do a little at a time, see how it looks overall and take a little more if I need to, right? You can't put the branch back. So um, in that case, if you're ever in doubt, you know, just start small and then do a little bit there and see how it looks with the, uh, whole overall shape of the tree. Um, I don't do a lot of shaping, I guess, when people request shaping per se. Um, I like to control the tree like in its natural kind of way and make it look natural when I prune it. But uh, I'm not really into like hedges and different things to make them all a nice perfect globe and shape. Sometimes correcting those trees or people have just randomly cut the branches off because, you know, if you randomly cut them off in places like those stub cuts we we're talking about, like some people cut the tips off of all their branches around a big tree so it looks more like a globe and then um, the tree doesn't know any better and it shoots out a bunch of sprouts like little hydra heads off of those branches. Um, perhaps you've seen them or if you notice a um, branch or that's just been lopped off, there's a bunch of sprouts coming out of it. Um, those things don't anchor to the tree very well and they kind of look hideous to me anyway and get out of control but then they serve the purpose of what the homeowner wanted and uh, they'll fill in leaves on the outside of the canopy and then the inside will end up dying and then you get this nice looking globe of a tree but um, the inside's terrible so I've had to correct a few of those and try and let the light and stuff back into the tree and, and see how it goes I guess. So the problem with pruning is you do it and then you hope they call you back in three years. And I say three years because you don't want to prune the tree, you know, general rule of thumb more than every three years. Especially if you're taking off like 25-30% of the volume of the tree. I would never want to go more than about 30% of the volume. Because the tree needs those leaves to photosynthesize and make sugar and grow and go through the whole life cycle of sealing up its wounds. You know, it's not really a bio thing and I'm not really a bio expert, so I'm not going to speak too much on that, but um, I do love that stuff and can't wait to learn more. These are, these are my new little pocket saw there. Corona. They just sent that one to me. That's awesome. And I, my sweet new pants from Cool. <laughs> Product shoutouts. Um, I did not get the pants for free. But uh, I liked the quick saw and then I was talking to them about just how I've had some troubles, you know, obviously using it in some tighter areas and things, and then they make this quick saw that's a smaller fold-up one, so it's nice, and it, because it fits in my pants, it's awesome, and same blade, you can replace the blade, so just tuck it away and throw it in the pants and do some finer cuts with that. It's nice. I like pruning, I really enjoy it, and uh, it's nice because as you get better at it, you can really finesse it and make an art of it. Um, take your time, you know, it's not it's not all uh, fireworks and cranes and cool ropes and stuff, but um, I feel pretty good after I do a good prune. I feel good for the tree. I hope uh, in a few years I get to go back and see a lot of them. I just moved to the new community here, Cochran, Alberta, where I do a lot of this work. So... Yeah, hopefully the cycle will repeat and I'll get to work on a few of these trees again. People will call back. I do a good job. So here I am standing back, you know, of course, I don't know why. Well, I mean, I do know why, but every time I go do any tree work, the sun is right in my face of where I want to look. But uh, that's how it is. I mean, the sun's in the sky, right? So here I'm just taking a couple steps back, just looking overall at the tree again and seeing kind of where I haven't hit yet and where I want to go back to and what I got to do. And then these, uh, yeah, Christmas lights are in the tree. So I didn't really throw that in the quote, but I ended up just, you know, doing a lecture for the lady there anyway. So 
helped her take the Christmas lights out of the tree and, you know, that kind of stuff helps you towards a good review with the customers. They're not worried about you spending too much time when you give a quote, you give a quote for the job and as opposed to an hourly rate or something, so. They think you're doing a little extra work for them too here and there, then they're usually pretty happy. Uh, and here, yeah, it looks a little thick. Um, a little more difficult for me to tell. Anyways, with my experience in the fall, winter, whatever, with no leaves on there. I mean, when there's leaves, it's easy to see. If you can't see through the canopy in certain areas because the leaves are too thick, then the sun can't see through there. So you need to take out some branches, be selective, and uh, maybe at different lengths, some near the tips, like these, you know, and some maybe towards the middle of the branch, and some maybe right up towards the main leaders. So you have a good variety. All depends on what you're doing, of course, but just some general things to think about. You don't always want to prune in the same spot. You don't want to stand at the bottom of the tree and just prune everything you can reach and prune it up from the ground. I mean, if, if that's why you're there, is to raise the canopy up because it's hard to mow around the tree and that sort of thing, then maybe focus on that first, but the rest of it has to be balanced out. I think the goal there is natural target pruning, like they teach it, the ARB can. Arboriculture Canada to make it look as natural as possible when you're done. Some philosophy to try and follow. There we are again, snipping some small stuff. This video, if you're still listening, I mean, hopefully it's not incredibly boring for you, but I mean, it, and maybe it's insightful if you're ever wondering uh, how other people prune um, compared to what you do. I mean, I'm kind of putting myself out there because. I don't see other videos of a lot of people doing this kind of thing online in the world of boar culture. You know, because everyone likes to look and judge right away and think, you know, I wouldn't do that or you missed that or whatever, you did something wrong. But, you know, that's cool. I, I Like I said, I work alone. If you got some feedback, love to hear it. Um, I just want to get better, you know. But uh, if you can watch this and realize you're doing a really good job, like from watching this, that's great. If you learn something, maybe you're a homeowner, like I said, or I just don't know how to prune, maybe you'll get some tips from this. I don't know. Having the right tool helps, like these sacateurs, hand pruners. They're not very expensive. You can get them at uh, probably even local hardware stores if you had to. I mean, the better you get, the nicer steel and sharper they're going to be. But always maintain them sharp so they don't tear away at the wood. And uh, you'll notice one side is blade, one side is an anvil, and you want to put the an or the uh, blade, sorry, towards the tree when you're cutting. So you see the blade on the right, anvil's on the left. If you can, I mean, if if you need to make a cut and you can't get it in there properly, I'm, there's been times when I've switched it around. But if it's nice and sharp and you put the blade towards the tree, you should have a nice clean cut. You don't want to leave it torn open best you can because anything open on a tree is, makes it more susceptible to disease and fungus or bacteria. Boom! Cut that little guy right there. This is a Schubert choke cherry tree. I don't know if I said that already. They got these long stringy branches that like to come down. They're kind of cool. I like them. They're nice, they're not too big, they, at least they're not in Cochrane, there's not a lot of big trees, so being a one-man operation here, it's it's uh, pretty doable. Just hop up into the union there and be in the tree and cut some pieces off. Sometimes some pruned off branches get left in the canopy if they get stuck, I don't see them. But probably not on this day because it was uh, like 90 km an hour wind warning. When I was standing up there, it was blowing around pretty good. So it gets a little bit bigger there, and you can't use the hand pruner anymore. you got to move to a saw. And towards the end of that saw, like that quick saw, I'm sure other hand saws are like this too. I just haven't used very many. Um, the, the teeth are a little bit finer, so you can kind of get away with some smaller branches and do a little finer work where it narrows out. And then the base of it towards the handle is uh, some more aggressive teeth, so... I can get up close to the handle and use the first half of the blade 
to take out thicker stuff. They're awesome. I like I like using a handsaw as much as I can. I mean, chainsaws are great. I have a lithium ion Husqvarna. It's called the T five thirty six L I X P, and it's awesome. But I mean, if I don't have to use it, I would rather use a handsaw because it's just light, quick, and easy. It's quiet. It's no impact. I mean, the battery is no impact, but you gotta charge it, make the battery. It's gonna get thrown out one day. Try and, you know, be in the tree industry, I guess. You try and be a little more environmentally conscious, I guess. Already taking interest in it. More lights! Got them up early. It's only October. So, yeah, if you have any questions, though, or anything about what I do, like, feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, I'm on Instagram at Kurt the Arborist. That's K U R T T H E A R B O R I S T. Kurt the Arborist. I do, uh, I'm a photographer too, so I try and take cool pics and edit them and uh, collaborate with other Instagrammers like arborists from all over the world. And they send me pictures, edit them, then repost them for them. So it's kind of fun. I like to keep in touch with. Tons of different people. Talk to the arborists from uh, India, Tree Care India, shout out. These guys are awesome. They're like the only arborists in India. And they're uh, like developing their own training programs and everything over there. They're doing really cool stuff. So those guys, lots of guys from the West Coast, West Coast fallers, loggers. A little bit of a different industry, but I like it. I like going out to BC all the time and there's lots of logging out there so it kind of reminds me of vacation and where we go out there. Just going back up here it looks like and removing some more crowded branches. These things kind of crowd all over the place so I mean you can't go up there I don't think and remove all of the crisscrossing and rubbing branches like you look for when, with most prunes but this kind of thing it's just kind of the way it is and especially if they're small and stringy and don't worry about it too much try and get the main stuff but I guess you have to look at your objective of why you're pruning if you're pruning to move the branches away from the step in the house like here that's those are the first cuts you're gonna make you know and then check your volume like I said you don't want to do more than like a third on a healthy tree and then look at the shape that it left behind and maybe try and even some out and then, you know, and then go in and look for some rubbing stuff. Take out any dead wood you find. If something's dying, you know it's dying, take it out. Sometimes that's where I don't know where to make the decision. I just, I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, it's still alive, it's fine, whatever. But I guess it depends on how much you got left. If you've taken too much out, or not too much, but you're getting close to your maximum, maybe you'll leave some of the ones that you're not sure of if they're dying or not. I don't know. Things I think about while I'm by myself. So looks like I'm setting up my ladder, little giant ladder from Costco, it's so sweet. And uh, looking through this thickness, pulling out some electrical cord, just a bit heavy in here. Schnip! Ah, reducing the length. So if you want to keep the branch, but you want to make it shorter, take the main leader of that branch and follow it back to uh, another branch that comes off of it. That's general rule of thumb, at least one third the size. See that one right there? Boom. Took off the longest middle one, went back to another one that was, uh, to two of them actually, that were at least one third the size. So that shortens the branch right there. It's kind of a natural target to shoot for. Uh, I think you can go smaller, you know, if you have to. If you need to make that decision for whatever reason, like if you're making a heading cut, which is, I think, a cut like off the top of a main leader, like I did with uh, the black knot, something kind of like that, where you want to go to something smaller than one third. If you have to, correct me if I'm wrong. If anyone knows, I like think that's a heading cut, and you can you can do that, but it's not really ideal if you can go to something bigger. Doesn't look as weird too, right? So 
think the video's wrapping up here soon. I think I turned it off after I kind of got into this light stuff and then I went and helped her take the lights out after the video was over. Might have climbed up there again and then um, clipped out a few more branches I saw once I was up there just to finish it up, but it's a general majority of work here. Oh, here I'm going to the pull print. So I had the pull print before, I just was, I was pulling that black knot out. See what you guys think of that move I did, the black knot, but daisy chain here, just a slip knot over and over again. Here is where I, I take it out wrong and then it uh, tricks me. And I can't get it undone, I realize what I've done wrong, and then if I sit there and think about it for a second, <laughs> pull it the right way and it all comes out nice. I'm probably not the only one who has that happen to them, but uh, at least I hope I'm not. Oh, little giant in the dirt. Having the GoPro on the helmet in these stringy branches is super awesome. Super awesome, frustrating. There, see how I took that extra piece off there? So I get rid of the most of the weight, just get out of the way. And then I can come in and do a proper uh, cut. So the big blade is a bit too fine. I probably want to go from the bottom. It is nice little trick to go from the bottom of the branch up towards the top. Let's see, did I go from the top? The top, yeah. Oh, I could fit it in there, I guess. Sometimes I go the other way though for the last little bit of a stub so that it finishes off nice and close up to the tree, but not too close, of course, like we talked about earlier. Leaving some out. But if you can't fit your blade in there to do that, it's, you can come from the bottom. Give that a little fold. Oh, my little pruning tools, sweet. That was it. That's all I'm doing. Oh no, here we go. Time to clear some more away from the house. So you look up there, that stuff's crowded. I haven't I done any attention to that yet. Like I was saying earlier, I could have done some of those right away off the beginning. Probably would have made more sense than uh, I could have seen what was left over after I made those major cuts, but you know, whatever. Sometimes I mix it up or I just, you know, I see something, I just go for it right away. That's the beauty of uh, working for yourself and do what you want, right? But I mean, ultimately, I want to be efficient and quick at it. So here, I was looking for a good place to re reduce that big branch. See, there's another one right where I got it. Yeah, I'm going to take it back to that one. There's two pulleys in there, so you get a bit of an advantage when you're... Uh, Making the cut. And same thing with these, if you can get the the hook, which is the anvil around the branch with so that the blade is on the tree side, not the branch side. If that makes any sense. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get in the right spot. There. This advantage of this thing though is that that arm that comes way out can often get caught on other branches or stuck in union, so you kinda gotta get a little bit, uh, I don't know what the word is, creative with it. This was lights again. Just left those up there till almost the end and then took them out, of course. Oh, they're completely like destroyed from me pruning. Not destroyed, like broken, but they gotta put them up again. So it looks like I got another big one up there. Not big, but long and in the way. Take her back. And for a branch, that's at least one third the size. Looks like a nice junction there with a whole bunch. I think I might have grabbed the main one and the small one too to get back in there. So it looks, you know, pretty natural. I think those ones grow in. Maybe I'd go back and take off a couple of those. So it doesn't look like a spider coming off of the end to make it look a little better, but I think I might have done that at the end to kind of clean things up. I don't know, let me know what you do if that's kind of the thought process. And that pole, I can put on two more equal lengths to make it really high. It gets pretty hard on the neck and hard to hold onto. But I mean, if you got something way up there and you got to get a branch, that's a pretty handy tool. I use it all the time.
I also have a silky uh, 21 foot Hayuchi, it's called. It's like a big ass saw on a pole, extendable, and it's great, but uh, has to be big enough wood and to be cutting that, you don't want to have any flex in the branch or anything, it'll kind of try and tear it, so. It's for some bigger stuff from far away. I don't know how big this takes down. Almost two inches, I think, but. Yeah, these trees are nice when they're, when they're blooming. They got some dark purple berries and uh, the leaves turn dark purple. This year they were full of aphids and tons of aphids everywhere. I think that's what they were. Uh, they're all over me though. Just lived in bug spray for a few weeks there in the fall. We're getting pretty close to the end here. Just selecting a few more. Like I said, if you have any questions, um, look me up on Instagram. You can direct message me there. It's like the fastest way probably to get a hold of me. I think I have an email connected to that too. If you're welcome to send me an email or whatever, leave a comment on this video, which it might go to Instagram or uh, probably on YouTube, it's pretty long. And uh, I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions you might have, if I can answer them. If not, I could probably steer you in the right direction. Or I might have some resources here, I could figure something out. But yeah, if you're looking for a good course on pruning, I went to Boar Culture Canada, they're in Olds, Alberta, and they do stuff worldwide, but they have like a one day pruning course and like one day is cheap. It's like 330 bucks, I think. And like the theory was awesome in the morning and you get to go out and practice in the afternoon and it really sets you up good. I would highly recommend it to anyone that's doing pruning. Okay. I think I'm contemplating these slides now. Maybe rip them down. Now's a good time, now that you're almost done, Kurt. Good job. Let's walk around this pole for a bit here. Show off, you know, on the street. Get people's attention, try and get some more work, right? Got that big long one right in my face. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> 